Santa's Christmas by Lavina Tien. It was a beautiful December day with clear blue skies and snow covered treetops. Christmas was in the air. But up in Santa's lodge, all was quiet. The usual hustle and bustle of preparing Christmas presents was gone, for Santa had fallen ill. Oh dear, <coughs> what will the children say when they don't receive presents this year? Santa wondered sadly as he lay on his bed. Suddenly, he heard a noise from outside. He looked out of the window and saw his four reindeer standing patiently as usual. But they seemed quite out of breath, as if they had just finished a long trip. And as Santa took a closer look, he could not believe what he saw. For behind the reindeer was a long train of sleds, carrying little children dressed in all sorts of colors. One by one, they hopped out onto the snow and headed toward Santa's lodge. Soon came a knock on the door. Come in, Santa called out, for he was extremely curious. In came a little girl, hugging something soft in her arms. I heard that you were sick, Mr. Santa, she began. So I'm giving you my teddy bear to keep you company. Why, thank you, little Emma, said Santa, for he knew every child by name. Then entered a young boy with a red package in his arms. We knew that you were ill, Papa Santa, he said. So my family knitted this quilt for you to keep you warm in the winter days. Why, what a wonderful thought, Paul, beamed Santa, patting him on the head. And one by one, the children came in through Santa's door, each with a special gift to wish Santa well. There were cookies, pies, socks, mittens, books, jigsaw puzzles, and even a small Christmas tree. Christmas delivered to my doorstep, exclaimed Santa. Come, let us all share these wonderful gifts. And he gathered the children around him in a big circle. Santa, which present do you like best? Emma soon piped up. My dear little ones, Santa replied, smiling. It is the love and kindness that each of you has shown me today. That is the best present of all. <coughs> he looked fondly at all the eager faces around him. This, my little ones, is the true meaning of Christmas. 
And with that, Santa gave each of the children a big, warm holiday hug. The Elves and the Shoemaker, retold by Bookbox. Although Peter Shoemaker worked hard and was kind to everyone in the village, he could never earn enough money making shoes. On this particularly cold and snowy day, all he had left in his workroom. Was enough leather to make one last pair of shoes. That evening, Peter carefully cut up his precious leather and laid it aside for the morning, when he would sew them together. The sun rose the next morning, and Peter was ready to start work. But to his great surprise. An exquisitely crafted pair of shoes sat on his work table. What magic! Said Cecilia, his wife. They quickly put the shoes in the shop window, for the holiday shopping season had just begun. As luck would have it, the shoes fitted the finicky Mrs. Sniggins perfectly. And she paid a generous sum for the fine fit. With the money, Peter went to buy more leather, enough for two more pairs. That evening, he once again set to work cutting his leather, and he left the pieces on the table when he went to bed, hoping for a good design. He fell asleep, dreaming of shoes. When he awoke early the next morning, he again found two finely crafted pairs of shoes before his eyes. Customers bought these up quickly, for they were masterpieces. Now Peter could buy enough leather for four pairs of shoes. This magical business went on for some time, and Schumacher's name became well known for the finest shoes in town. These days, life was much better for Peter and Cecilia. One day, Cecilia said, "I wonder who's been helping us so much." Peter announced, "Tonight, we will hide in the workshop and see what goes on there." And so they did. At exactly midnight, two tiny elves tiptoed in and began to work. Swiftly making the fine shoes, they were shabbily dressed, and weren't even wearing shoes themselves. Before daybreak, they had already dashed off, leaving several pairs of shoes ready for sale that day. Peter and Cecilia were grateful to these little elves. And worried about them working so hard in such cold weather. So Peter set to work, making two tiny pairs of shoes, and Cecilia stitched two warm sets of clothing for each of them. On Christmas Eve, instead of leather pieces, they set the little shoes and clothes out. 
and hid themselves again. At midnight, the elves popped in and saw the new clothes. In a flash, they had them on their little bodies. They were so happy that they laughed and chuckled and danced right out the window. Never to be seen again. Peter continued making shoes every day. And he and Cecilia lived a very happy and contented life for many years. As did the elves. The First Christmas Retold by Iliani Pinheiro and Maura Hurley Around the month of December, children like to imagine what happened on the very first Christmas ever, even before Santa Claus. I know the story well, for I was watching it all from above, in the dark sky on the evening of December 24th, oh, so many years ago. I am the star of Bethlehem. I was requested by angels to shine brighter than all the other stars that night, to tell the whole world that a very special child had been born to spread goodwill and peace. And this is the story of the first Christmas. All was quiet that night as I watched the three kings traveling slowly on camelback through desert lands. Just then, I beamed brightly as the angels had told me to. The kings noticed me in the east. They couldn't resist my brilliance. Perhaps they had heard that a star like me was going to show the way to the Son of God. Traveling through the night, the kings met shepherds watching over their flock. We are following that incredibly beautiful star there in the east to find the place where the Son of God has just been born. From there, they all traveled together, watching me, the brightest star in the sky. Finally, they arrived at a small town called Bethlehem and saw that I was gleaming radiantly above the barnyard of an inn. All was quiet and peaceful. Their caravan entered the barnyard to see the tender little baby lying in a simple manger fluffed with hay. Next to the baby were Mary and Joseph, his mother and father, and many farm animals. The kings offered the precious gifts they'd carried from afar for baby Jesus. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The shepherds kneeled on the ground to pray. 
They were grateful for the gift of love and the purity the baby brought. Many people offered gifts after that. I suppose this is why, on Christmas Day, people around the world enjoy offering gifts as a sign of love and hope. And they try their best to bring happiness to others, as Jesus did all his life. Now, I'd like to wish you a holiday season that shines as brightly as the star of Bethlehem. Hey there! Don't forget to like and share this video. Also, please leave your comments below. 